the global production of limestone is six gigatons per year, like already. And so we direct that towards like enhanced rock weathering or, or river rock lean enhancement. That's like potentially like two and a half to three uh, gigatons of, of removal per year. If we like redirected these industries and like, so there's something hopeful around like something that's like already like real being like just like redeployed towards CDR that like I think makes us like a really tangible option for, for what to do first. Uh, I love that. Hey, everybody, we are joined by Luke Connell, the CEO of Carbon Run, sharing about his company and the vision for reversing climate change. Luke, you guys were, what's what's the latest with, with Carbon Run? You know, I, you bring out you bring out a side of me that I don't typically bring out, which is one that talks about myself at all. But like we were we were on the front page of the New York Times. There's <laughs> my there's my hand putting lime literally this limestone here in in a river in in rural Nova Scotia, and uh, yeah, it was it was pretty surreal to land in New York and buy a copy of the New York Times with with Carbon Run story on it. Um, and then also to, to meet you for breakfast and celebrate over hot chocolate. As there you we go. That's right. The first day of New York Climate Week. This was out. This was out in the world. What um tell us, take us behind the scenes. Like what was this? What's what's this? What's this week, past week been like for uh for you as a as as a as a founder and for your for your company? If we had failed, I would have been the sole author of Carbon Run's failure as the CEO. But you know, I think we've developed a group of a thousand authors of our success and so like people like you to like give people a huge hug and be like, Hey, like, look at this. Like we did this. Like that was huge. You know, so groups like you groups, like frontier groups, like carbon removal, Canada, and, and all these sort of industry and associations who are pushing this forward on, on the stage from their own perspective, uh, uh opportunities. Um, that was the best part to like, like celebrate that, like on a one-on-one -on -one level with all these people who for like up to three years, four years have been like part of like, okay, we have this really cool idea. Like, what do we do with it? Like, how do we bring this forward? And like, how do we make a methodology? How do we develop our IP? How do we pitch this to investors and buyers? And like, you know, so much of this came from that air miners experience where like we pitched in, we pitched to Frontier and we're able to pursue that to where we are now. And we pitched to our existing investors who have just invested on a second round with us and followed on taking like their pro route. Like, I don't even, I didn't know what pro route even meant before air miners and yeah, anyway. I came in, I came in as like a nonprofit executive who never raised a dollar in his life. So I was like, I know nothing. Like I'm going to like take a hundred percent of the feedback like constructively and, and work with it. And it, it's gotten, it saved, it, we wouldn't be here without it. Like a hundred percent. So um, I'd be wondering why people weren't listening to me and like why they weren't understanding what I was trying to do for the planet. It's like, I'd be angry. Whereas like these guys helped me fight through that and just like get to like list, like get out of your own head like figure out what they want to be hearing and need to hear and deliver that. And um, that's been critical for carbon run as a new pathway to get where we're, where we're at. What do you want people in carbon removal? What do you want the world to know about what's, what's ahead? What's next? Like, where do we go from here? I would reckon that like, we're, we're pretty close to getting to that 300% year over year growth. And we might be one of the first air miners companies along with others to generate these offtakes to like get to that next phase. And, What's 2025 going to bring? Hopefully it's like an, another 300% leap. And then there's, you know, six or nine more companies who are getting these types of offtakes. So just like keep fighting through to that point. Cause I think like the world is continuing to come to the grips that like, it's not, it's not a either or it's an and. and, and like, we're talking to a number of thought leaders and journalists these days who are interested about this New York times coverage. And what we keep being encouraged with is like the, it's the and like, like we have to decarbonize and we need CDR. And so like, that's really cool. Like, I'm like, oh, I don't need to fight that battle anymore and convince people. It's like, yeah, yeah, of course. It's, and I think like, this is where we have an inherent opportunity with Carbon Run. Uh, this re We're a restoration company first and a CDR company pays, a CDR component pays for that restoration benefit. So when you can, when you can frame it that way, I think it's, it, it gets, it gets easy to get people turned on to what CDR can, can look like. And I think, you know, I would, I would recommend dive deep into what your, your opportunity does. Like, I think there's a few playbooks, like we're a restoration playbook. I think charm has a, as a, a jobs playbook where they talk about the boost to the economy, like the, find, find where you add value beyond carbon. Even if you can't quantify or sell it, use that to push that social buy-in. 
So I think that's something that we really learned that was effective for us was, you know, restoration first, CDR second. And there, all of us can find something that we do equally well as carbon removal with the companies that we we run. And so, it, like, I was in the, I was in my I was in a cab last night back from the airport. And I was in Ottawa for Naeem's announce. So yesterday, the Canadian government announced a ten million dollar uh, fund to procure CDR in Canada. Um, so like like through procurement, not a grants and contributions, which is a big yeah, difference, right? Cool. And um, so I'm, I flew back from that. I'm in a cab, and the the, the cabbie telling me he just got off three days of um uh fishing up on one of the lakes north of toronto and i'm like this guy would love river alkalinity enhancement you know what i mean but he would love it for like that reason that it's, yeah. it's good for the environment good for fishes we all have connections with things but like so many people have connections with the environment and if you can tell them that you're going to help make that a better place for them to enjoy that and connect with that i think like that's the common denominator so like well, cool, I love that. Yeah, if, if it, just in terms of like the big space, I think about our our conversations a couple months ago about you know the New York Times reporting that carbon rule was 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 proponents of the of the technology were the ones that said it was required, and now today on the front page, carbon rule is required. Carbon rule is something that that scientists are saying is is needed. It's something that scientists are saying is going to work using the, the methodology that 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 carbon run among, carbon run among others is is building. Um, I mean, again, you go back to a couple months ago, Al Gore saying that carbon removal is this sort of funny looking thing on stage at, at, uh, at, at TED Detroit. Um, and today we're unleashing this, this more accurate narrative that's carbon removal is required, not optional. That's building on carbon removal today, building on this front page reporting. I mean, it's, this is, we're, we're now in a, a, a new conversation with, investors, policymakers, industrial partners, thought leaders, journalists yeah. that comes from carbon rule is required and not optional. And that is, this is the first time carbon removal is on the front page of the New York Times, but it's not the last. Yeah. And if you look, I love that. And if you look at how like the world is a pie and like the world's like shrinking, the opportunity pie shrinking, like carbon removal is like a new slice in that pie that makes it bigger where all of a sudden there's economic opportunity that's like additive and not and, and, and sustainable as opposed to like extractive and damaging so i think like the sooner we can like create like a part of our global economy that is like adding back to our uh, planet as opposed to pulling out of it like like this is quite compelling and i think for us like on that note like what we've been really hardened by is this uptake with frontier has has drawn in a whole new wave of partners where when we look at our technology we for every ton of drawdown we need about two and a half two two to two and a half tons of, of limestone or dolomite to do that we have to pay for that. And there's huge companies all over the world that supply limestone for all sorts of things like agriculture, cement, uh, you name it. And if you give them an opportunity to sell the, the same product they make for polluting industries and sell it into sustainable industries, they will do that in a heartbeat. So I think like we're really hardened by these big companies uh, like Omia, uh, based out of Switzerland, like Lafarge, like Franza Foss in Norway, who are all mineral producers saying like, how can we help sell to you so you can do more CDR and we can get more into that line of business? And I think that's what, that's what our buyers are super excited about too. Is like, we, like, we need the innovation to happen, but we need the next wave of offtakes to be taken up by big industry players who can get that cost down quickly and show that you can be a big company making a lot of money while, while saving the planet.